Hi, I'm Joe from Scrum Innovations with another Knight Power Sports product. This is the ultimate kit for the Honda. This kit is for an ATV with the high-low shifter. Inside the box, you'll get our thank you card, a sticker, something about our safe box, and a card with instructions to, to get to this video. This is the shift guide. This is the display lights uh, electronics we have here, the Sure4 manual actuator, and various other parts and brackets here, which we will install now and you'll see where they go. The first step is going to be to put your ATV in two wheel drive if your actuator is working. If it's not, I'll show you how to manually do that. First step is to remove the seat, squeeze on the handle on the back, and lift up. Next, remove the center plastics here. There's no fasteners that hold this on. It all is pop, popped on parts like this, and it slides together in other areas. It pops off. Next, we'll remove the footwell. There are these push fasteners. This is a tool to remove them. You can use something like a flathead screwdriver also. They pull out like this. And then this part comes out like that. There are these push fasteners all here. There's one down here more up here and one underneath the fender up here and one down at the bottom right here. Next you need to remove the two screws that hold on the footwell bracket. Now we can remove the entire footwell. This goes around. Wiggle it around and work it out there, and now that's all. Next, we're going to remove the front fender here. This is also held on with those push fasteners. One here, one here, here, another one down here, another one all the way up here, and then in the front you have one here, and you have one here. You may want to remove your rack to get to those easier. Since I have the radiator relocate kit on here, I used some flathead screwdrivers to get in there and pry these ones out so that I didn't have to remove all this. Now that front fender's out of the way, I'm gonna take off the uh, drive low shift knob. This rubber knob just pulls off like that and then need to remove these two screws. Those are 10 millimeter. Next, we remove this whole bracket by taking these two screws out. And now we can just place this off to the side for right now. Be careful not to kink that cable. And we'll come back to that in a little. Next, we're going to install the cable in the actuator. If you are upgrading from our tank lever kit, you would remove the actuator from your differential and then follow these steps. Since this is the ultimate kit, we will not be reusing these short screws. If you just have the side shifter kit, you will be reusing these screws. So now we can take the pull cable, put it through the hole, and screw this in. And using 
a 10 millimeter, tighten it down just like that. Pull this cable and put it in the hole here. And then you can pull on the other side of the cable to get out some of the slack. Make sure that your cable is all the way down in there. Next, we can take the O-ring out of this bag. Put this in the back of the actuator. That's actually good, that just happened. If this bearing and shim comes out, the shim goes on first, then the bearing goes on top. Okay, so now we're going to remove the electronic actuator and put this in pla its place. Next, we will remove the electronic actuator. We need to follow the wire down and get the connector off of the frame, off of the clip that was holding it on the frame, and then push down on this part of the connector here and pull the connector apart. Then using a 10 millimeter, you need to remove the three screws that hold the actuator to the differential, which there's one back here, one down in this corner, and one down in this corner over here. You do not need to unscrew those. That's what holds the actuator together. Again, it's a screw here, down here, and over here. Now those three screws are out. I'm gonna put a rag underneath the actuator because some oil will probably come out from the differential. As you can see, a little bit of oil there. And that's normal. So if your actuator worked and you were in two wheel drive, you should be good to go. But if it wasn't and you were stuck in diff lock, you need to raise the front wheels off the ground and you can tell I'm in diff lock because I can't rotate these wheels because the back wheels want to spin also. Everything is locked together. So I'm going to rock these wheel with my hand while rotating this shaft counterclockwise. That gets the gears to separate so they're not stuck together. And if it gets stuck in the four wheel drive, rock the wheels. Now I've gone all the way around and I know I'm in two wheel drive because the front wheels spin freely. Rotate this shaft just slightly clockwise now so that it is straight up and down. And that is lined up to put your manual actuator on. Using these three goldish color screws, these are the three that we will use to mount the actuator to the differential. So now I'm going to put the manual actuator on the bearing and shim fell off again, so I'm gonna leave that off for now. And the pull cable, we're going to route right next to your uh, steering shaft up in front of your gas tank and over the frame right here. That's where the cable goes. Now I can clean the oil off that came out of the differential and push the actuator on. I need to rotate it back and forth just a little bit like that to get the gear from the actuator to line up with the gear in the differential. And that's pushed all the way on. Now I can use the screws supplied and fasten it to the differential. 
Next, we're going to install the cable mounting bracket. That is this bracket and this bracket and this bag. We need one of these screws. So I'm going to line up the slot on this flat bar, flat bracket, with the slot on the curved bracket. Make sure those are going the same direction. And then put this bracket over top of your frame here like that. And then using one of these screws, this goes through here. And you can screw this in. Just hand tight, you want this, it's actually too tight, you want this to be able to touch. So loosen that screw. So that those two can touch like that. And now we're gonna take the full cable, unscrew the bottom nut all the way. Screw the top nut all the way up and then slide cable through the slot and through the hole, put the nut back on using two 13 millimeter or open uh, adjustable wrenches, tighten this down you want to make sure that this bracket is pretty straight you know you don't want it leaning too far one way or the other it doesn't have to be perfect but make sure it's pretty level like it is right there and then finish tightening that down using a 3 8 socket you can tighten this Then install this screw in the threaded hole in the bottom of the flat bracket and using a 530 seconds Allen key, you can tighten this against the frame. This screw holds this bracket from rotating. It doesn't need to be very tight. You don't want to over tighten this, just get it snug. like that. Next, we are going to install the lever. We will need this bracket, which goes on the frame. This piece of uh, foam, this side is sticky. If you put this over your frame and it's very loose, you can peel and stick this so that it um, holds the frame tighter. That's only if you need that. We'll need this bracket. And then from this parts bag, these four screws are what hold this bracket to here. Before we go and put this on the bike though, we're going to screw this lever into this bracket right here. Okay. Might be a little tight um, with the painted bolts. That paint might make it a little tight. Use a quarter inch Allen and tighten that on like that. Now we can go put this on the frame. Um, I mentioned the four screws. We're also going to need this push fastener and that is, um, I'll show you that now. This bracket, we slide on the frame, move the radiator hose out of the way like that. That pops on there. Then we take this push fastener Slide the lever behind this bracket in front of the gas tank. Like that. 
push fastener goes through the hole in this bracket and through the hole in the frame there. It helps to line it up so that everything is exactly where it needs to be. Just like that. And now take the four screws that I mentioned before. screw them into the bracket. So I have these four bolts in just hand tight and I'm now going to, you can see that this is very close, maybe even touching your gas tank a bit, but that's okay when the guide is in place, it won't allow that. But still, if you can twist this just a little bit to try and get it a little closer to the pull cable here and a little further away from the frame. You know, you don't want it this direction and tight against the frame. Try to twist it just a little bit and then tighten these four bolts down. So now these are tight and the lever is in good place, moves freely. We're going to hook the cable up to the lever next. We're gonna use the all of the silver uh, fasteners in this bag. So we do not need these three screws for this part. So first step, put one of these washers on this screw, put it through the cable like this, put another washer on this side, and then put a nut on the opposite way you would think so that the flange is facing the end of the screw. Screw it on to about there. So you have the screw, washer, the cable, a washer, a nut, then push this through Start with the center hole. These are adjustments if needed, but it should be good with the center hole. So you have that much that comes through and then take the other nut and put it on this side. If not enough threads come out of the screw, move the inside nut further back. Then take your 530 seconds Allen key and a 3 8 wrench. Hold the screw so it can't turn and tighten this nut. You're tightening this nut now against the other nut that you put in there already. That allows for offset for the cable to move back and forth since all of these um, levers and things might be slightly different for each vehicle. You want this cable to be as straight as possible so by having this screw sticking out the back side of the lever like that, there's a decent amount of room for it to move back and forth. That's what it should look like. And that cable you want as straight up and down as possible. Next, we're going to put the high-low shifter bracket back on using the same screws that you took out of it earlier. Tighten them down with a 10 millimeter socket. Next, take these brackets, this little bag with these two brackets and two screws, and this is going to get screwed onto your drive low shifter. Be careful when you take this out, there is a little cotter pin in here. This will be used to replace this one when we're doing an adjustment later. So this goes on like this. And screw that down just hand tight. Should be in about that position. And then this one goes on this side. Also, just hand tight. It should look like that. 
You're going to then take the shift guide and the three screws that we set aside earlier. The low drive bracket goes through this notch and your two wheel drive, four wheel drive, diff lock lever goes through this notch. Like this, slide this so that these holes line up and you're gonna have to start with one That uses the same 530 seconds Allen key. And then move this bracket around a bit. You need to push back on this lever a little bit. And put in this screw. And then tighten these down kind of one at a time, snug them up, move the bracket as needed to get it to line up so that these screws go into the holes that are on the shift gun, like that just popped on there. And these three screws will get everything lined up nicely. Once those are snug, you can tighten down these two. Again, carefully do these so that you don't crank down on it and it pulls on everything. Next, we're going to install the shifter knob. This needs a 1 8 Allen key out of this bag. Get shifter knob like this has a spring inside and there's grooves that the spring sits in and a um, you know hole here that the lever will sit in so these two together like this slide it over the shaft get the bottom of it to go in you may need to pull on the lever a little bit get that to go down like that then take the supplied screw this goes in the top push down on this screw that in and that's it your lever is in place you can squeeze on this slide it but release it that's full wheel drive squeeze on it slide it release it that's stiff lock but we need to adjust the cable to make sure that it is going into these positions. So put it in the four wheel drive position and then we'll go down to the actuator and adjust the cable to make sure that everything in the actuator is lined up. So what we want to do here is get this line on the pulley to line up with this notch on the housing. We want that in a nice straight line that will be four wheel drive all lined up. So we're going to Pull this rubber, pull that rubber cover off there and unscrew this adjuster. And as I'm unscrewing it, you can see the pulley is rotating. And get it to right about there. That looks like it's pretty lined up. If it won't go, if you can't get it to move as you're doing this, um, I'm putting the uh, lock nut up against the adjuster right now, but I'm not tightening it yet. If it won't rotate as you're doing this, it's because the gears in the differential are crashing and not lined up and you need to jack the front end up and roll the wheels in order to get the gears to move and slide together. So now that we have that adjusted and it looks like it's straight, I'm going to shift it back to two wheel drive. And you can see the pulley rotated and when I spin the wheels, they spin freely. When I shift to four wheel drive, the wheels are now spinning opposite directions. 
harder to spin. When I spin this one this way, the other wheel is spinning the other direction. The back wheels are not spinning because they're locked on the ground. So that's how you know you're in four wheel drive. They spin opposite directions and the back does not spin. When we shift into diff lock, if it won't go, you need to spin the wheel, try to spin the wheel as you're pushing on the lever. And that'll get the gears inside the differential again to move and line up so that it will go into diff lock. And now you should not be able to spin these wheels because it's trying to spin the rear wheels also. And you can see what the pulley looks like when you're in diff lock. And then when I shift back to four wheel drive, you can see that that's still lined up. Back to two wheel drive. You can see it rotated all the way the other direction. Now the wheels spin free. So I'm going to tighten this lock nut up against the adjuster and then push this rubber cover back over the adjuster. Next, we're gonna make sure that the low drive uh, cable and lever is good or if it needs to be adjusted. So we can see here, it doesn't go far enough and it hits back here. So we're going to make an adjustment here first. So the first step is to break loose this um, lock nut here, unscrew that, then remove this cotter pin, and you can disregard this one. A new one came with your kit. Take off this washer. I'm going to actually shift it to the low position so it's loose right there, and push out this shaft here. I need something to push it out. Actually, it's hitting the bracket, so I do need to move it this way to get it out. Now that's out. Now this will slide off, and I can tighten this, screw this down, and make this adjustment here, or you can screw it the other way if you need to, whichever way it needs to go for your particular vehicle. Now that's all the way down as far as I can go. So I'm going to put it back on here and see if that is where it needs to be. Put that bolt back through like that. Still off a bit and I used all of the adjustment that I have here. So I'm going to first put the washer back on and put the new cotter pin in. Tighten the lock nut, lock nut up against it. And now since we need more adjustment, we can come down to this side of the cable, follow the cable down, remove this bracket using 10 millimeter socket. There's one screw here and there's one screw up here under the exhaust. Okay, remove that shield. We have two more places we can make adjustments. This here, these two large nuts here will allow the cable to move a little bit. And then on this end of the cable over here, if needed, we can make an adjustment there also. So first I'm gonna start here with a 19 millimeter. And a adjustable wrench, because I don't have two 19 millimeters. So I have moved this nut down as far as it can go on the cable and that made the whole cable shift this way, which has moved this lever a lot closer to the L here. So now I'm going to tighten this nut down like this. And now we can see shift into the D and we can see that that's good. You can see here that it's as far as it wants to go. I'm pushing it past that point to there and then to the low and locking it into position there. If you wanna make even more adjustment here, since I ran out of adjustment here, 
you can then move down to this adjuster here. But as long as it goes as far as it wants to go, and you can see it's not hitting that side there, it's actually getting pushed past it like that, that's good. That's locked in to the drive position and that's locked into the low position. So that's good. I'm gonna tighten these nuts and put that cover back on. All right, now we're going to install the display lights components. First, I'm gonna put this shim back on the pulley and then this O-ring on the pulley. I have the pulley, the actuator in the two wheel drive position. Make sure you put it in the two wheel drive position for this next step. Take the display lights component and put the O-ring, the supplied O-ring on the back of it now. If you did not buy the ultimate kit, if you just bought the side shifter kit, you would put the O-ring on your lid and screw your lid on now and you would be done. Since we have the ultimate kit here, we're going to put the O-ring on the back of this now. Then we are going to spin this counterclockwise as far as it will go. And if you look at the back of it here, you can see what position that is. And we're gonna go clockwise just a little bit so that it lines up. So it's pretty much horizontal like this, pretty much the horizontal, which lines up with the groove in the actuator. You can see how that's going this direction and that is going this direction. So now those two parts will meet. So push this onto the actuator. And if we need to twist it just a little bit to get that part in there to mate and go together, so now these two are on and lined up and you can feel if you try to move this that it's definitely hitting and in that groove. Next, we're going to take the lid and put the O-ring on the lid. And then we're going to use the four long screws that came in this bag to mount the lid and everything onto the actuator. Now I've tightened down these screws. The actuator is completely in place. I'm going to connect the connector to where the actuator, your electronic actuator used to be plugged into. You can put dielectric grease in this now and then put this together. Get it to click. And then you can fasten it back on to the same spot that it came off of or you can use some zip ties to secure it out of the way. Whatever you do, just make sure it's not loose. Make sure you secure it out of the way. Next, we're gonna follow the wires from your four wheel drive switch. They go down behind your headlight pod and they end up right here underneath this panel. This panel pops off. Yours might look a little different if you don't have the radiator relocate. These are the wires from your four wheel drive switch. This is clipped on to something down there. So you might be able to go from underneath your plastics and get to it, it's kind of hidden, but this is what you're looking for. You need to get this out, pull these apart, and then we can plug in the next components. This part that came with your kit, you can put dielectric grease on now. This plugs into where your, this, this connector here, which goes up to your four wheel drive button, put this in like that. And now you can use these for auxiliary things. So on this vehicle, I have this wire here, which goes, used to go to just a regular push button switch for the light bar. I'm gonna plug this into the black and white wire. It doesn't matter which one, it's just an open and closing switch now. So now my four wheel drive button will work my light bar. So light bar's off, four wheel drive out, four wheel drive on, light bar on, off, on. 
And then the other wires, you can connect to something so that when you flip your diff lock switch, it will turn something else on and off. Maybe rocks, lights, or something like that. Next, I'm going to plug this part in, which comes with the uh, display lights upgrade, the ultimate kit. If you didn't get the ultimate kit, you will get just these plugs, which would go in where the electronic actuator used to be plugged in and in the place that I'm gonna plug this in now. Since we have the ultimate kit, we're gonna plug this in where the other side of your four wheel drive switch used to go. So find the other orange connector, put your dielectric grease on there now, and then plug this in to here. Like that. Now we can take these and secure them down here with some tip ties and stuff, and then put the bracket cover back on. So now everything is installed, and before we put all the plastics back on, we just want to make sure that the display lights work properly. So right now we're in two-wheel drive, shift to four-wheel drive. If it won't go just like that, just like before, spin your wheels a little bit, and it'll move just like that. On the display now, you can see it shows four-wheel drive. I shift back into two-wheel drive. You see that goes off, back into four-wheel drive, that goes on. And when I go to shift to diff lock, again, it won't go. So I need to spin the wheels and then it locks in. And now you see the diff lock came on. So if I go to four-wheel drive now, spin the wheels a little, two-wheel drive, four-wheel drive, diff lock, see it comes on, everything's working the way it should. So now let's go ahead and put everything back on. Now we're going to put the fender back on. Slide this in the same way he took it off. this screw back in along with all the other fasteners. Now we can install the footwell. Put in all these push fasteners and then the screws that hold on the foot peg. Before we can put the center plastic back on, we need to take this off. Take off the uh, 1 8 Allen key screw here on the knob. Then with the 5 30 seconds Allen key, remove these three screws and take the shift guide off. Now we can put the center plastic on. levers through this hole and then this goes back on the same way it came off. The parts down at the bottom slide together. Tabs here, click in on the other side, get it behind the foot peg. Right here, just one more. That pushes together there. Now we can put the shift guide back on, right on top. Slide the levers through, pull this lever forward. Put these three screws back in. Tighten these. Take the shift 
shift knob. Screw that back in. Push this knob on your low gear shifter. Put the seat on. And you're all set. Ready to go riding with the Sure 4 Ultimate Kit.